Hi, everybody. Okay, I'm grateful and glad for everyone joining me today. But I am going to start this video with a trigger warning. I am in a foul and very sad mood. Actually, I don't know what I am. I woke up with my cold back with a vengeance. Dragon Man leaving on a school tour, so I am going to worry until he gets back. We had a dog fight here today, blood all over my kitchen floor. And the Municipal Pound will be out here later to collect the stray dogs. And of course it is breaking my heart. But at least they will be out of the rain and the cold. So, I know that because some of you have walked this road with me here on YouTube for a couple of years now. It may feel like you know me, but in reality, you don't. But one thing I am prepared to share is that I may have European, British, Scottish ancestry, but I was born in Africa and my nature, the way I think and deal with things, is firmly rooted in Africa. We are indeed the nicest, most jovial, sympathetic, empathetic, generous people on the entire globe. Most of us are hard-working and tough as nails, wonderful people, tolerant and caring. But boy, oh boy, get on our wrong side and we really are like the worst, most vicious dog protecting or fighting over a bone. And never ever look at little grey old me and think I am any different because I am not. <laughs> now, people outside of Africa think, because I am a white South African, I'm racist, that I'm constantly complaining about our government and other countrymen. But you have no idea. My fellow countrymen and women are just that. I may complain about them, get angry with them, but don't you dare criticize or bugger around with them, because I will stand up and fight for them with everything I have, regardless of their color, religion, or sex. That is, of course, if they are right. I mean, we are always fair, aren't we? Now, why am I giving you this semi-angry rant? Well, because I am actually very angry, really angry about everything, and particularly about Harry and Meghan now spreading their vile, race-baiting, vile, lying, evil presence to our African continent. Look, I know Harry has been to Africa before. I know he spent quite a bit of time here, but that was the old Harry, before the evil invaded his soul. However, having said that, reading Harry's book, you will see that Harry was not exactly the sweet bloke we thought he was, not even when he spent time in Africa. However, now with Megan in his life, they are like a disease, a virus, infecting everything and everyone they come in contact with, and that is why I am as mad as hell this morning to hear of them going on a tour nohal of Nigeria in a few weeks' time. Allegedly, Harry and Meghan were invited to Nigeria to undergo a cultural tour of the country by the West African country's chief of defense. Hmm. Now listen. I mean, you can all listen to this video and rant, but the video is actually directed at Nigerians and all Africans and the stupid, stupid Sun newspaper, which wrote in an article by Sarah Grealish, I think that's how you say her surname, G-R-E-A-L-I-S-H. Yes, and I'm naming her because really, Someone is a brain cell short somewhere. Anyway, Sarah writes and her equally mm -mm, editor let it through so 
let's rather not be so descriptive and just continue and I'll quote what she wrote. However, Megan, who is of Nigerian descent, will join him as they head to Africa. My word, are you thick, deaf and dumb? I cannot believe the utter ignorance. Really, I can't. I know some people listen to my videos because on a few occasions I recognized my narrative in some articles. So I hope some journalists listen to this particular video and get the message across to the sun. Megan Markle can not be 43% Nigerian unless her mother is at least 96% Nigerian and Doria Ragland is not even close to 96% Nigerian. In order for Doria to be 96% Nigerian, both Doria's parents had to be Nigerian and they weren't. I am Far too lazy to count now, but a good percentage of Doria's ancestors were mulatto, or coloured, or mixed, whatever you want to call it, which means that those ancestors were most likely from a white farmer, maybe a slave owner, I don't know, and a black mother. And that is the truth for as far back as Doria's ancestry can be traced. So if that is true, which it is, then can Sarah Grillish and her editor please explain to me how Meghan Markle can be 43% Nigerian? I really want to know what new signs a journalist of the sun has discovered which the most learned scientists haven't yet. Please tell me, I'm all ears. So the very same applies to the Nigerian official who approved this visit. Only very recently, when Megan was aligning herself with the Nigerian team during Invictus, did I defend the Nigerians by saying, they are not stupid. They know Megan lied about being partially Nigerian. They are just accepting and pretending for what they can get out of doing so, be it money or attention. I said that people are usually underestimating us Africans' intelligence and awareness and that anyone, even in Africa, with a measure of education knows more or less how DNA works. But apparently, I was wrong. <laughs> so one last time for Sarah and the Sun and whatever, whichever mainstream media outlet who wants to look really stupid and foolish, let Granny explain to you one last time. Megan was born from a white father and black mother, thus 50% of the one and 50% of the other. The white side of Meghan Markle stayed uninterrupted white, European, right up until Thomas Markle married Doria. So on Meghan's white side, she got 100% of 50% white DNA from her father, or thus 50% of her blood is not mixed. However, on Doria's side, it is not the case. Twice that I can remember, Doria's male ancestor married a mulatto woman, meaning a woman who was of mixed white and black heritage, plus very early on in the American family tree, it appears the woman one of her ancestors married or had children with 
may very well have been white. So Doria was already of mixed blood. So although Megan has 50% of Doria's DNA, Doria's DNA is not completely black, nor completely Nigerian, Swahili, Ethiopian, or anything else you can possibly think of. So let's just conjure up figures, shall we? Let's say Doria is 20% white, okay? Or then European. 30% Nigerian which is not even a DNA classification because Nigerians themselves are from different origins and different ethnicity. Okay, but let's carry on. 40% comes from Ghana and 10% from, say, Cape Verde, which is all gibberish, my friends, because all of the people from West African countries are intermixed and have mixed, albeit black DNA. But I am just giving the gibberish as an explanation, okay? So then we can also say Megan inherited from her mother 10% white, remember half, 15% Nigerian, 20% Ghanaian, and 5% from Cape Verde, which makes her then 60%, if not more, white, and 40% mixed black ancestry. And that can be anything. Yoruba, Hosa, Igbo, Akan, Gurma, Mandi, and many, many more, as those are just a few of the ethnic groups from Western Africa where most of the slaves for the American trade came from. There is thus no way under this sun or under any sun in another galaxy that Megan can be 43% Nigerian. And if the leader of this military division believes that Megan Markle is 43% Nigerian, then, sir, you are not only making a fool of yourself, but then you have to go back to school, sir. And go and learn about your own country and its people, sir. Please, sir, do so. Because I hate seeing my fellow Africans making fools of themselves. Let Sarah Gerlish and the son make fools of themselves. They have newspapers to sell. But our pride, sir, is not for sale. Nigerian, in any event, is not. N-O-T an ethnicity, sir. It is what a citizen of your country is called, regardless of their ethnicity. Okay, so that is Megan. In the off chance, they were invited because of Harry's military connections, then that would be equally ignorant. Of those four medals Harry is wearing so proudly, only one is a military medal. <laughs> and, sir, he did not get that medal for a courageous act or anything like that. No, he received it for going to or being in Afghanistan for a few weeks. On the 19th of December 2017, Harry inherited the title of Captain General Royal Marines from his grandfather, and in January 2020, he effectively threw that prestigious title back in his grandfather's face, along with that of Honorary Air Commandant of Royal Air Force Honington and Commodore-in-Chief Small Ships and Diving. Now, for all who do not understand how these royal patronages of the military works, and for the chief of the military division in Nigeria, what Harry did, ditching his country and those positions in particular, is like a soldier going AWOL or treason. These positions are for life. Prince Philip was Captain General of the Royal Marines for 60 years. 
four years. I think it is a huge embarrassment for Britain to have an ex faux traitorous prince and a woman and a woman deemed evil by Her Majesty the Queen go on a semi fake royal tour based on lies and misperceptions. Can the King, the Privy Council and the British Government not understand that Mr. and Mrs. Windsor, Wales or sucks at it, can go where they want to, do what they want. We don't care. But as Prince, Duke, Duchess and everything else, they are still associated with the monarchy and legally everything they say and do they say and do as representatives of the throne, the crown and the monarchy. I'm sorry, but to not put an end to that is ridiculous and makes everyone involved look ridiculous. And I feel sorry for the British people who vote in poll after poll after poll to have those titles stripped. Yet neither the king nor government pays any attention to them. And it makes you wonder if they are ignoring you on that, what else are they ignoring you about? And for those of you who, again, for the first time in a long time, decided to question my interest in the King and Catherine, you are obviously new to the channel. I'm half Scottish, although born in Africa. South Africa was a British colony and still part of the Commonwealth. I have family and friends in England to this very day, as some of my cousins have emigrated back to England, and another cousin lives in New Zealand, also a British realm country with the king as head of state. My daughter and granddaughter are both Canadian citizens, also with King Charles III as head of state. I myself spent lots of time in England years ago and considered it my second home. I've also grown up with the royal family and likely know more about them and their history than most British because it had been an interest and a hobby since I was knee high. So why can I say something or feel something about King Charles? Well, my dears, that is why. The person who looked at the three photographs of the king for me to give me an idea as to why he may have that colouring works in the medical field. Guess where? In London. She's not South African. As far as Catherine is concerned, she is only four years older than my eldest daughter. And in quiet moments, I think about her and I feel sad. I feel sad for her, for her very young children, her parents and her husband. Just like I would feel if one of my daughters were ill or had any type of cancer. And all I would like is just to know that she is okay. Even if I do not talk about it or scoop it, even if I kept it to myself, I just care about that beautiful young woman and her young children and her wonderful parents. And if that is reason for you to be nasty, then so be it. I'm not going to stop caring just because you said so. Anyway, guys, I'm sorry for the rant, but the fact that there are no repercussions for the likes of Meghan and Harry is really getting to me. For me, they are representative of so many others who sailed through life committing horrible, disgusting acts, hurting average, hard-working, straightforward people. Yet, because they have money or some kind of power, they get away with it all, day after day, year after year. And yes, I am not only criticising Britain or then the UK. Here in my country, Oscar Pistorius is a brilliant example. He killed a beautiful, intelligent young woman, a young woman whose father ended up dying of a broken heart, 
and whose mother will never hug her daughter again. Yet, there he is, smiling broadly as he gets in his expensive vehicle in Pretoria, where he also lives at his uncle's multi-million rand home in luxury. Now, if I could wipe anyone's smile off their faces, I would have loved to wipe that smile off Oscar Pistorius's face. Had anyone else of, say, 50 million people done what he did, or even less, they would have spent the rest of their natural life in prison. But his fame and family money bought him out and intimidated and fan fucked those who were supposed to hand down justice. Are things currently any better in the United States? No. How many towns are literally by a rich family? I mean, just think of the Murdochs. Okay, they had now come to a fall. But for how long did they run that county? <laughs> or a family of drug dealers or a corrupt sheriff? Megan and Harry are just the poster children for all these people. And they need to be made an example of soon or we can all give up fighting for what is right. Okay, guys, as you can hear, I'm not myself today, so I think I need to stop it right here. I think I've had enough. I need a rest, and I need to breathe deeply and relax. I will be back with karma content. I don't know when, maybe in a few hours, maybe tomorrow. But until then... Please take good care of yourselves. Bye.